Good afternoon, good evening. It is Weather United here, and welcome back to another detailed evening update on the tropics. In today's video, we're keeping an eye on tropical depression number nine that could become our next name storm, which is Ian. Before I do get started, if you do enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Taking a look at the latest visible satellite imagery from tropicaltidbits.com, and we can see we do have that tropical depression not any better organized since it was this morning only the fact that we do have more deeper convection getting closer to the low level center which is a symptom of what's to come when this gets into a much more favorable environment in about a couple of days but in the meantime this is what it looks like on satellite we got westerly winds here we got um, southerly winds here we got easterly winds here and so we have a closed circulation here that is partially exposed due to the northeasterly shear hitting it in the face on the northeastern side of the circulation. So when we view this out from a zoomed out perspective on the water vapor imagery, we can see there's a lot going on with the pattern right now. The first thing that I'm noticing is, of course, there is, again, tropical depression number nine. There is the easterly wind shear, actually more coming out of the northeast because of the outflow from Fiona that is way up here off the map. And then, of course, we got a trough um, towards the northwest of the system, helping to set the edge of what we have here with the shear. But now, of course, we got an anti-cyclone that is beginning to intensify over the system, and it will not be long before Tropical Depression 9 rapidly organizes as it heads towards this direction, towards the western portion of Cuba, Jamaica, as well as the Cayman Islands. The 5 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center does clearly indicate that there's already tropical storm watches issued for Jamaica. We got hurricane watches already for the Cayman Islands. So you already need to be taking uh, preparations and getting things together, getting things ready for some heavy rainfall, some strong winds potentially, as this passes indirectly towards your southwest. But uh, it could be getting on top of one of the islands of the Cayman Islands. This could be very, very destructive potentially and very impactful. And then eventually getting into Western Cuba by Monday night into early Tuesday morning before getting back over the Gulf of Mexico into Florida by Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday as a powerful hurricane, potentially a major hurricane as what the NHC explicitly shows in their forecast. The winds now are at 35 miles an hour and it is moving off right now to the west northwest at 15 miles an hour. Taking a look at the latest key messages from the National Hurricane Center as of five o'clock, the depression is expected to produce very heavy rainfall, flash flooding, and possible mudslides in areas of higher terrain in Aruba, Bonaire, and these, I ah, can't even say that other island, we'll simply say the ABC Islands and the Cayman Islands and Cuba in the coming days. A tropical storm watch has been issued for Jamaica with the tropical storm conditions possible on the island by Sunday. A hurricane watch has been issued for the Cayman Islands with hurricane conditions possible by early Monday and tropical storm po conditions possible by late Sunday. Number three, early week, uh, the early next week system is forecast to move near and over portions of western Cuba as a strengthening hurricane and then approach Florida Peninsula at or near major hurricane strength with the potential for significant impacts from storm surge, hurricane force winds, and very heavy rainfall. While it is too soon to determine the exact magnitude and location of these impacts, residents in Cuba, the Florida Keys, like I said, the Cayman Islands, um, need to take precautions and make sure you are very aware with what may be headed your way. Hurricane force wind probabilities have gone up with a 30% chance of hurricane force winds on western Cuba, including with a 5 to 10% chance of hurricane force winds over the southwestern coast and the western half of Florida in the next five days. When we take a look at the tropical storm like wind probabilities, and the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, it is 8 in the morning if you're near the Cayman Islands in western Cuba, by 8 at night if you're in the rest of western Cuba, and then eventually getting into Florida with those tropical storm winds likely at this point, again, the most likely arrival time by Tuesday morning into Tuesday night. And again, these chances will go up, so do not 
be like thinking, oh, there's a 40 or 50 percent chance of tropical storm force winds in Tampa, Florida or Sarasota, Florida. Remember, this is five days away. And so the chances will likely go up significantly as we get a better forecast understanding by a lot of the dynamical and statistical models down the road. So again, chances will go up. When we take a look at the latest 18Z GFS model run, there has been a trend for a stronger storm and also it has also trended slightly further west over the Gulf of Mexico in recent couple of runs. As I did state in my last video this morning that the trends could go back west as a did going back east. This could waffle back and forth, folks, from day to day, from run to run. So please keep this in mind. I emphasize that very clearly in this video. So in the next 30 hours, we have, again, a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. This would be Ian on our list of names. And why I'm pre-naming this is because there is exceptionally high confidence that this will get a name um, by the next couple of days. So going into um, day three, or actually day two, let's just do that on the GFS. We have a 986 millibar. So this would be a hurricane in a couple of days. And again, two days from now, we would be looking at a category one hurricane on the GFS. By day three, look at this, we could be looking at a major hurricane or getting close to that with a pressure of 960 millibars, getting very close to the Cayman Islands or passing right over those islands um, during the morning hours of Monday. So there could be some substantial, maybe life-threatening impacts on those two islands, let alone with heavy rain, strong winds, storm surge, high surf, you name it. There is going to be some impacts. And then going into day four or day three and a half, we have a 950 millibar hitting Western Cuba. Now, if we look back at the last few runs, we can see how this has kind of just been backing, uh, going back and forth. Now it's a little slower. If this slows down any more in the favorable environment, by the way, we could be looking at a much stronger storm than what's indicated on the GFS. Now I'm not trying to hype this up, but again, if it slows down, it just means more extra time over 30 degrees Celsius of waters. That's mid upper 80s Fahrenheit and the low sheared environment. So it's all about speed and timing. The longer it has um, time to rapidly intensify, it takes an advantage of the atmosphere. We can be looking at a really big situation. So by the time we go into day five, this is by the middle of next week, September the 28th, we have a 937 millibar hurricane yet again in the Gulf of Mexico. If we look back at the last couple of runs, if you remember my video this morning and yesterday, we can see we had 954 this morning, 956, and then even 976 on top of Florida. Look at how this has all changed. Models have went back west again. And now that extra time over the Gulf with lighter shear means the system has a better opportunity of re-strengthening if it encounters any land with Cuba. All right, and then it moves on shore, possibly over portions of the, um, say, Panama City, Pensacola, Florida, as a low-grade hurricane, maybe a high-end tropical storm. But again, really going, uh, really stretching my arms out a little too much. I shouldn't be going that far. But nevertheless, there is a an increasing threat for some significant impacts on the Gulf Coast of Florida for right now. So taking a look at the European model, let's see with what this shows. This has also been trending further west and intensifying it a little faster. So by day two, it is to the south of Jamaica right with moderate to heavy rainfall and then getting into near um say the cayman islands by monday early morning as a tropical storm or if not a low-grade hurricane and then possibly a strong hurricane approaching the western cuba region and then eventually approaching say southern florida sarasota maybe tampa florida lake okeechobee florida in about five days as a very powerful hurricane getting close to that major status 949 millibars on the European model. So now, another cool tool, we can better figure this out on the ensembles, right? We can't go without that. That's what makes these videos very unique. I'm not just looking at operational guidance, which is what we just looked at, the European 
the GFS, those are operational deterministic models. We're now looking at the ensembles, several members put into one ensemble forecast. And so this has low level vorticity. That's the colors that you see on your screen. So I want to make myself clear vorticity with the color coat overlay. Then we have the heights in blue. And then we have, again, the wind patterns in the 200 millibar level. That's at like 39,000 feet. And that is illustrated with the wind barbs that you see, like 50 knots right there for an example. So we could um, look at this in three, uh, three and one, three um, perimeters on one map. Okay, so going into 48 hours out, we can see what the GEFS model is showing. Look at that vorticity to the southwest of um, Jamaica by Sunday morning. And take note, there is no shear now. We were looking at maybe just a touch of shear by Sunday morning still, but it looks like the ensembles are really backing that off. So we're not looking at shear at all on Sunday, perhaps. A day sooner with lighter shear than what we were looking at. And so right now, the GEFS wants to blow this up a little quicker and more intense. So in three days, we have a strong hurricane potentially approaching Western Cuba on the ensembles because of this flow that is very weak um, aloft. We're not talking about shear at all, probably shear under five knots. And then this approaches Florida, but notice the ensembles are a little bit further north with each of them. And so there is some uncertainty exactly where this is going to hit. There is still the cone of uncertainty that I still have in portions of, or literally most of Florida, or if not all of Florida, because of the models going either further west, then they go further east, then they go further west again. They go slower, they go faster. Okay, so there's a little bit of uncertainty here exactly where and when those impacts will be on the Florida coast, but we know pretty good idea that Jamaica and the Cayman Islands could get significantly impacted. Hence is why we have a tropical storm watch and a hurricane watch issued on the five o'clock advisory by the National Hurricane Center. We could better figure this out on the latest HWARF and the HMON, which are still really bullish forecasts, but we're starting to figure it out a little bit. So as we go into the next 48 hours, there is Jamaica. This model is a little further south than the previous couple. And so right now, if this trend continues, it's safe to say that Jamaica could actually be better off just seeing some moderate to heavy rainfall with very little to no wind at all. But areas like say the Cayman Islands, you're not out of the woods yet. You still have the potential for tropical storm force winds nearing hurricane force as we have a 976 millibar hurricane to your southwest. This is by Sunday night into early Monday morning, September the 25th and the 26th, and then approaching western Cuba as a very powerful hurricane by um, by Monday night into early Tuesday morning, and then eventually still intensifying this to a pretty strong hurricane right off the Florida coast. But again, it is very uncertain exactly who's going to get impacted because this again could waffle back and forth. Maybe the next run, it's on top of Florida at this time, or the next run, it is further offshore. We do not have exact accuracy, 100% likelihood details that this is going to hit this area, we're very confident. Right now, there's still a lot of uncertainty. So please um, respect that when I, when I make these videos and make these forecasts that, again, it's my own opinion. So taking a look at the HMON model, let's go back here again. This is literally barely hitting the Cayman Islands, barely seeing tropical storm force winds in 72 hours. All right, and actually might even miss, might miss, the western tip, the western little finger of Cuba, if possible, which would be only better news because it would impact lesser people, but still wind, rain, whatever, surf, a lot of problems. Because look what happens by the end of the model run. We have a strengthening system, 930 to 940 millibar in the next four to five days when it gets into the Gulf. Now, again, this could be generous given the recent uptick in the statistical models by the GFS and the European, and even the ICON is already starting to latch on to a further westward jog, a westward trend with its ensemble guidance. So this is a little concerning. Uh, may not be Florida as much as what we first thought, but still, please get prepared just in case. 
Follow the advice by the National Hurricane Center as you see there. All right, so now we're gonna take a look here at the latest spaghetti plot. All right, my intensity forecast has been raised substantially from the last one. So of course, most of the models do indicate that this will become a hurricane. We know that for sure in three days, we could be continuing with a powerful hurricane, maybe a major hurricane in about 84 to 120 hours. But again, all dependent on Florida right now and how much interaction does it have with Cuba. So therefore, my intensity forecast has been raised significantly from the previous one, and now I have winds up to about 90 miles an hour, up from 70 miles an hour from this morning. So I'm gaining confidence that this is now going to be a hurricane more than likely in about three to four days. The track forecast has also gone further west than the previous ones, as we can see here. Very tightly clustered right now over western Cuba, and most of these models right now are leaving Florida out of the ballpark for the time being, except for the TABD model, the COTI model, that still has this making its way onshore over, say, Tampa, Florida, Sarasota, Florida. Yes, Orlando, Florida included in that. So again, this does not mean that, oh, okay, so we should not get prepared right now. Because again, assuming that if the tracks continue doing this, right, you are still under the threat. So I would again start monitoring the progress, get the latest forecast by the NHC. Again, this is not a accurate 100% certain forecast as we have seen that already. This is going further west. Does it continue going west in future runs? We don't know for sure. All we know is right now, we have a lot of these tightly clustered models right now over Western Cuba, over some of the Cayman Islands, actually all of the, um, yeah, all of the models are over the Cayman Islands, believe it or not, or most of them. So yeah, the furthest West Cayman Island really needs to take this one pretty seriously um, in the next day or so. Make sure you have any um, thing, um, any stuff prepared, make sure your house is boarded up just in case if um, we see a much stronger system than what is indicated. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace!